everything I would know. Just thank you for your time. Thank you for um, connecting to this ministry, connecting to this grace, actually. Um, if you feel as though you're led to sow by the Holy Spirit, if He's leading you to sow into this ministry, please do. But the information for sowing will be in the description down below. And um, if you're not yet subscribed, please do. I would very much appreciate it. Um, hit the notification bell, like, share, and, and comment on this video so that it can be released to as many people as possible, that it may be a blessing unto them to hear the word of the Lord, to receive revelation of the word of the Almighty God. So what I'm going to talk, talk about today, guys, um, we're going to be talking a, a bit about portals and uh, destiny portals and destiny because your destiny is connected to a portal that many of you don't don't know actually um, but it is we're gonna go into scripture so I'll be able to show you exactly how this was from the beginning of time from the beginning of time being from the book of Genesis and from the days of Adam and Eve this is actually the teaching the Lord has led me to do today for you guys. So this is on his heart and he wants his people to know exactly what's happening and how they can get to their destiny. Now, earlier this year in January, I did prophesy that this is the year of um, destiny. I said many people will enter into their destiny this year because I saw an open portal in the heavens. And... Um, you know many people are already entering into their destiny but of course they need guidance and instructions on how to um, strategically do that because Satan hates when we when we become manifested as sons of God um, in the body of Christ he hates it we become manifested as sons of God in the body of Christ when we enter into our destiny and um, I'm going to show you here in scripture, right? Because this is the year of the open door. This is the year of portals. This is the year of uh, destiny. I'm going to show you guys how, how you can enter into your destiny and how important it is to know, um, to know your destiny. And to know who are your destiny helpers okay to know who are your destiny helpers it's so important um so let's go to back to the beginning the book of genesis most of the teachings that i actually do they come from this book the book of genesis um not necessarily the teaching is from this book but the Lord always leads me back to this book, the book of the beginning. In mo most of my teaching and many of my teachings, he always comes back to the, the Genesis. So the beginning. So um, it's imperative that if you have not read the Old Testament, you should. I always recommend people to read the Old Testament, um, especially the books of the beginning Genesis especially Genesis Exodus like those books are, have so much so much meat in it that you can receive revelation for that can help you understand what's happening in this present time or what's happening in the New Testament Bible so let's jump into scripture right so we're going into Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. And I'm going to read here verse 7. It says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into him, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So I'll, I'll just ask you guys one question. One question. What do you say or what would you say makes you a living soul? 
just from reading this verse what would you say makes you a living soul and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul what would you say makes man a living soul and <clears throat> if you if you have the answer or if you think you know the answer please comment down below and let me know or even comment in the chat and let me know what do you think makes man a living soul and if that thing was taken away from him what would justify him as dead okay what would justify him as dead so let's let's jump on to verse 16 Okay, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. I'm going to read. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. <clears throat> okay, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Right, so this is the commandment he gave to man, Adam. And the Lord, the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. So verse 19 says, And out of the ground of out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature that was the name thereof right so imagine adam was being visited by many creatures that did not look like him right and he had to name them all so verse 20 says and adam gave names to all cattle and the and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field But for Adam, there was not found an helpmeet for him. So during this process that the Lord instructed him or ordered him to perform or carry out, he realized, Adam realized that, hey, there's nobody here that looks like me. Like everybody has a, a helpmeet, you know, like I'm pretty sure he was naming them by twos so because the purpose of doing that was so that they're able to multiply and fill the earth like god said if you were to read like um if you was to read i think further down in this chapter god said that they should multiply and uh, yeah so when adam realized hey there's nobody that looks like me like what's happening like why is that he understood that there was not found and help me for him he understood that there was none of his kind because this was the realization this was the realization that the lord wanted adam to get to okay that he may desire that adam may desire in his heart and help me for himself just by naming these animals the Lord said, I'm going to use this method so that Adam can desire it in his heart. So that Adam can come to the realization that he needs help. I'll show you this, right? I'll show you this. The Lord made Adam to carry out this work or to carry out this process so that Adam can desire a helpmate so that he can align so that adam can align to the desire or align to the will of the almighty god hi guys you're with me are you with me put some fire emojis in the chat and and tell me if you really understand what i'm saying what am i saying adam had to go through this process to understand that he needs some help and he needs someone that looks like him he had to desire that for himself in order to align to the 
to the will of God or to the desire of God the Father. Because look, verse 18 said it. Verse 18 said, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. So before Adam could even desire a help meet, God had already desired that for Adam. God had already planned to give Adam a help meet. That was his will for Adam. But the Lord had Adam desire it himself instead of God telling Adam, I'm going to make you a help meet. You know, instead of God showing up to Adam and say, listen, I know you need somebody um, to help you. You're alone. I understand. I'm going to make you a help meet. Instead of God actually confronting him, confronting him or communicating that desire of his to Adam, um, the Lord decided to allow Adam to align in his heart or align to his will. Just by simply going through this process of naming animals, naming the beasts, even before, even before Adam desired, the Lord had already had plans to prosper him, to prosper Adam with a helpmeet. So, in essence, what you need to understand is that or what you need to take note of, because I do hope you're taking notes, um, understand this, understand that your desire, your desires, or your desire does not come from you. It comes from God. That is Him allowing you to align to His will for your life. When you align to the will of the Lord uh, for your life, everything begins to flow according to the will of the Lord so that you enter into that destiny, into that promise, into that place He is calling you to. Because now you're fully aligned to the will of God the Father. So even if you feel as though you have a desire to get married, a desire to have babies, a desire to um, move or find a new career, it's not necessarily you desiring that. It's God desiring that for you, but He's making you, uh, He's making you um, think that it's coming from you because He wants you to come to the realization that hey, I need to enter into a next level. I need to enter into the next glory of my life. I need to enter into my next promise or my next purpose. And so He He makes you make the first step, and then. He enters into your life and help you enter into that next glory because you desired it and it was actually his desire for you so now you're fully aligned verse 21 and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof right so because Adam desired, simply because Adam desired, the Lord went to work on his behalf. That's what I'm telling you. He waits for you to make the first move. He waits for you to align before he moves on your behalf. He waits for you to desire before he moves on your behalf. So look, he already started a move on behalf of Adam. He took out his ribs while Adam was asleep. So you could be sleeping and the Lord is already moving on your behalf. You just don't even know it. He's already doing that. He's already working that thing that you have been desiring in your heart for God knows how long. He's already at work at it. You just don't know. You're just asleep. Because you can't hear his voice. You have no idea what he's doing in his spirit realm. So look, listen. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. It says, delight yourself in delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart commit thy way unto the Lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass right right so the Lord David is saying here David is saying here delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you all the desires of your heart right but first in order to receive the desires of your heart you must commit your ways 
unto the Lord. If your ways does not please God, if your ways are not committed unto the Lord, how can you receive your desires? Right? Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. So are you trusting God in the process? If you have committed your ways unto the Lord, are you trusting him in the process to know he will bring it to pass? Right? So this is why Adam committed his way unto the Lord in the process of just carrying out the commandments of the Lord. Just being instructed by the Lord to go ahead and name these animals. Right? Adam was just committed to the ways of the Lord. And because of that, Adam aligned his desire to the will of God the Father. And verse 22, And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And verse 23, it says, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man right you you guys with me so far put some fire emojis in the chat put something in the chat let me know you're still with me and i'm not speaking to myself so look listen this verse is telling you that hey even though adam was able to receive his desire from the lord he's still continuing in that thing or in that rook which the Lord had called him to name everything that the Lord brings to him he continued naming everything that the Lord bring, brought to him so even the woman even though Adam received his desire he continued in that work and he named her woman like people who are confused about marriage or about their spouse or about finding the right one i i always tell them that <clears throat> especially men i tell them that you know your helpmate when you see them you know you automatically know there's something in you that the lord has created that when your eyes are laid upon a woman you know that that is your soulmate you know that that is your helpmate this is why there are men that go looking and seeking but Adam never went looking anywhere. Adam never went seeking for his desire. He never went seeking for help me. All he did was just desire in his heart. Because his ways pleased the Lord, the Lord moved on his behalf to grant him what, whatsoever his heart desired. So Adam was at work actually. That was Adam working that moment. He was working. His job was to name the animals or name whatever the Lord brings to him. And in his work, his God ordained work, Adam was able to meet his helpmate. So, just like you, any man, any man that is seeking a wife, is seeking to get married, continue in the assignment that the Lord has placed over your life and the Lord has instructed you to perform. And do, in doing that, you will cross paths with your helpmate. You will. If it is a desire of yours, the Lord will make it happen for you. Right? So when he does and you lay your eyes on this woman, you just know in your heart that this woman is flesh of your flesh and she was taken out of your rib. And you know, you would begin to talk just like Adam because you know in your heart that she belongs to you. What I say is that men, you don't have to go looking and it's not a woman's job to look for a man it's not a woman's job to look for a man a, a man neither is it a man's job if it is your desire the lord will bring you to it he will bring it to you in that place which he has he has you occupying so I like to give this little testimony, I guess, of 
my husband and I. Um, you know, my husband, he always tell me that he knew I was the one for him. And I'm like, how do you know? How did you even know? He's like, I just don't, I don't know. But I, I knew that I knew the first time I saw you, I knew that you was going to be my wife. And I was like, well, I had no clue. And the thing is, we didn't really have much of a relationship. We simply crossed paths because we were exactly on our assignment in that point of time in our life. We were where the Lord had placed us to be. So we were occupying that place in that point of time. And we crossed paths, you know. Of course, we were in different seasons of our lives. But we crossed paths and he knew. He knew I was going to be that person for him. He knew I was flesh up his flesh, rib out of his 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 rib. So, it, <laughs> you know, that is how love is. That is how God ordained love to be. Especially for those who are seeking love when they they meet that right uh woman they meet that soulmate they immediately know my husband actually waited for me a couple of years he waited for me a lot of years <laughs> he waited for me a lot of years and um i didn't even know because we we did not have any communication we lost touch with each other and uh, it just so happened that it was a God ordained plan that we reconnected in the most craziest possible way. Most craziest possible way. Nobody, none, one of us could have predicted we would have reconnected like that. And we began chatting, and it was as though I'd known him all my life, and it was as though he had known me all his life. You know, that is how love is. Love is you know you just know in your heart there's no question about it there's no there's nothing about it that you need to question that is how god ordained love to be especially the love of the love between a man and a woman uh, the love between uh, a man who um desires a good woman men 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 if there's any one of you looking at this Please do take note. This is strategy. This is how the Lord works. This is how you are placed in certain areas. In certain, it could be in your job, you probably got a promotion, you probably have to move. It may seem like some of the most um, confusing situations or some of the most uh, uncomfortable situations. But know that the lord like like i said earlier adam was asleep he had no idea what the lord was up to all he knew is that he woke up to his desire that's how the lord moves when you're sleeping when you're busy doing that thing that the lord called you to when your eyes become open you see that the desire you had in your heart all this time has just been placed right in front of your eyes just like that Let's move on. Genesis chapter 3. Right? Genesis chapter 3. Now, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So he asked a very manipulative question, because obviously he was going to deceive her. So first, he had to manipulate the truth. He had to manipulate her to get her to converse with him, right? This is why he asked her, Yeah, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Did God really say that? You think he really say that? Then the woman answered, and she, she said unto the serpent, uh, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but... Of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God had said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die verse 4 says and the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die right so now he's manipulating the truth 
now he's beginning to manipulate the truth to her. And verse 5 says, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Right? So this is essentially true, but it was manipulated truth. Okay, this was manipulative truth, right? It says here, verse 22, I'm just cross-referencing. It says, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Right, so God is saying, yes, Adam and Eve, they basically became like gods, like unto him. And now they know the difference between good and evil. So the snake wasn't lying. He was just manipulating the truth. And so verse 6 says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to her eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Understand this, understand this, understand this. So understand this. This is the importance of your desires. This is the importance of your desires, okay? And it all started in the Garden of Eden. It all started in the Garden of Eden. Why? Well, look, look, look here. I just read the verse. Look here. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to her eyes and the tree a tree to be desired <laughs> a tree to be desired right so adam desired eve but eve desired another tree okay he desired another tree hi guys are you with me are you with me so Adam's desire was very pure, it was holy, it was humane because he, he knew in his heart that he needed human connection. He needed somebody that looks like him in order to become, right? In order to become, he needed a helpmate. But Eve, Eve's desire was so unpure and unholy. It went against the orders and the commandments of the Almighty God. Because now she's desiring something that is not meant for her. Now she's desiring something that is sinful. Now she's desiring something that was not made for her. It was not made for her. So sometimes some of our desires may not be according to what the Lord wants for us. It may not be according to His will. It may not be according to His plans for us in order for us to enter into our destiny. Your desires simply may not align to, to that of the Almighty God. And this is why you need to die to flesh. This is why you need to die to flesh. To know that not your will be done, but the will of the Almighty God, the Heavenly Father. His will be done in our lives. Irregardless of what we desire, His will be done in our lives. Right? So look at this, I'm cross-referencing here to, to verse 16. This is where God saw Adam and Eve and He spoke to, to Eve and He judged her according to her sin. He said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband 
okay thy desire shall, shall be to thy husband and, and he shall rule over you and he shall rule over you so now god is trying to reconnect her back to back to his will all right back to his will trying to align her back to his will by commanding her in this judgment that no your desire shall be towards your husband so now she shall just simply desire adam she cannot desire anything else so anybody else she will now desire adam and he will rule over her because because of her dishonor because of her disobedience right so she did not desire adam she desired a fruit from a different tree the lord had to step in and judge her with his righteousness he did not punish her he simply judged her with his righteousness because he is a righteous god right whether eve liked it or not whether she wants it or not she must know only her heart must know only desire her husband this is the curse she will have to live with along with that the lord also indicated that he will gr give her great sorrow great sorrow in conception and in great sorrow sorrow shall she bring forth children right so this is the repercussions of sin this is the repercussion of disobedience this is the repercussion of dishonor right this is the repercussion of eve's actions in the garden right i can't say just eve because they both committed this sin against god adam and eve where are verse six okay where are verse six and I'm telling you about the desires of Eve, how unholy and unpure it was. So, using Adam and Eve as our example, when it comes to looking inwardly, when it comes to looking at your own heart, what do you see? What are the desires of your heart? Who are, who is provoking the desires of your heart? Where is it coming from and where is it going to right because from this classic example we see that not all of our desires are good and pleasing unto the lord not all of our desires are aligned to the will of god so these are some of the questions you need to ask pertaining to what your heart is speaking to you what your heart is desiring what is it speaking is it being provoked or is it aligning to the will of god right so understand this here that desires desires played a very important role in the garden of eden it all started in the garden of eden just read the, the last bit of this verse and it says here that she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat right so guess what adam 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 was with eve when she ate the fruit adam was with eve when she ate the fruit he watched her do it right adam watched her do it because it says here that and gave unto her husband with her he was with her in that very moment right he did not rebuke her he didn't trust in her nothing he just ate it adam he watched eve eat the fruit and then he also took a bite from eve right then Adam also took a bite from Eve. So look here, verse 12. We're jumping on to verse 12. And the man said, 
the woman who thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. She gave him what she ate and he took a bite. So, if your spiritual eyes are open and if you're matured in the spirit, you would know that you would know that <laughs> you would know that the apple Eve ate was an apple of the eye. It was eye candy. Because the tree she ate from it had no roots. <laughs> I'm speaking in parable. Those of you who are spiritually matured, you may guess it. Some of you may not. But it's written in scripture here. It's written in scripture. If you have spiritual eyes to see what you're reading, it's easy to receive revelation. Now, we're jumping on to verse 13, right? We're jumping on to verse 13 because I just read verse 12. Right, so now Adam was trying to palm Adam was trying to palm off this sin on Eve and so he's saying well this woman gave me the fruit to eat but you were standing right there with her while she was eating the fruit and you refused to stop her why didn't why didn't you stop her because essentially Adam was responsible for Eve so this is why in the garden um, verse 9 it says here that when Adam and Eve tried to hide themselves verse 9 says and the lord god called unto adam and said unto him where art thou and then verse 11 he says the lord asked him hast thou eaten of the tree whereof i commanded thee that thou should not eat because god now realized that they were they had knowledge of good and evil they they now knew that they had no clothes they were naked right so god came looking for adam because he is responsible for Eve right so verse 13 verse 13 it says and the Lord said the Lord God said unto the woman what is this that thou hast done the woman said the serpent beguiled me and I did eat right the serpent deceived her and she eat right this was his plan from the beginning this is why he was trying to manipulate her to allow to to have her or allow her to enter into deception because he knows if he can get to the woman he can get to adam if he can get to the woman he can get to adam now the lord gave righteous judgment to the snake to adam and to eve verse 13 is verse 15 it says here that Okay, so verse 14 it says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So understand this, what the Lord is saying here. This is what the Lord is saying here. Because you serpent, because you are cursed, right? And you have encouraged this curse to come upon Adam and Eve. There will be hate and animosity between you, between you and the woman called Eve. As well as between your seed and her seed. This is God speaking. He's saying, even between your seed and her seed, it will be spiritually immature of me to read this verse and think that the snake is just a snake in the Garden of Eden. Because the Lord is saying, between your seed and her seed, his children and her children, there will be heat and animosity. So, like I said, I'm speaking in parables for those of you who can receive this word. As I continue, this last part of the verse says, 
it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. So he's telling the serpent that the seed of the woman, it shall bruise thy head, shall bruise the serpent's head, right? And thou and the serpent shall bruise his heel, the seed of the woman. Amen. Understand that Adam and Eve were the first man and woman to be created. From them came every genealogy. From them came the Messiah, Christ Jesus. From Adam and Eve came the Messiah, Christ Jesus. Jesus is God the Father. In this instance, the Old Testament is giving a foretelling of what is to come in the future simply with this verse right because jesus the messiah he came to earth to go onto the cross not just to die for us but to defeat satan but to defeat satan so satan was defeated by jesus on the cross by bruising his head right so jesus bruised his head even though Satan tried to bruise his heel, who is he's talking about? Jesus. He's talking about Jesus, his heel. And that indeed Satan tried to do. Satan tried to kill him. This is this is why they paid Judas. This is why Judas was paid 30 pence to kill Jesus. But what Satan didn't understand was the uh the the destiny of Jesus. He tried to mess with Jesus' desti destiny. But what he didn't understand is that even though Satan was after him, even though the Lord God Almighty was still using the works and the plans of Satan um, that he meant for evil to turn it around for good. So all that Jesus tried to do, um, all that Satan tried to do towards Jesus, he still led him to the cross. So the plan of Satan was backfired. The Lord has now, the Lord had just pronounced judgment on the serpent, or in other words, Satan. And now, verse 16, the Lord spoke to Eve, the woman. He said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Like I just spoke about this verse. He was allowing her to enter into the realization of the re repercussions of her sin. And this is the main reason why Satan chose to beguile Eve, to deceive Eve, to manipulate her. Eve was the portal to Adam. She was the portal to Adam's destiny because she came from God as his helpmeet. So both of their destinies were to be established in the first commandment that God gave them. What was the first commandment? Let's go to Genesis 1 verse 28. Genesis 1 verse 28. It says here, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. This was the first commandment of the Almighty God to Adam and Eve. They were to be fruitful and multiply. They were to be fruitful and multiply. This was their destiny. To be fruitful and multiply. And Satan knew this. Satan knew this. This is why he chose to corrupt Eve first. He knew. He knew that if he got to Eve, he got to Adam. Let's look here at verse 15 again. It says here that the Lord specifically... He specifically put enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of Satan. Because their seed is what would have brought forth the promise of the entire world. The Messiah, 
Christ Jesus. This is why he told them from the beginning, be fruitful and multiply. So the, the Messiah was destined to be birthed forth out of a woman. Verse 20 states, and Adam called his wife, his wife's name, Eve, because she was the mother of all living things. This was the destiny of Eve, to be the mother of all living. To be the mother of all living. From Eve, we all came after. Every genealogy came after Adam and Eve. So understand this, guys. Understand this. Understand the importance of women and the importance of not just women, but a helpmate. A soulmate, someone sent to you by God himself to help you enter into your destiny because you can't do it alone. This is why you need destiny helpers. This is why you need a helpmate. Women are portals. Women are portals who are supposed to be directly connected to heaven. But unfortunately, many of them are not because Satan corrupted that for us with sin. Many women... Well, and men, but in this case, women are not rooted in Christ. So their portal has been corrupted. I'm going to read here Proverbs and chapter 23, verse 27. It says, For a prostitute is a deep pit, an adulteress is a narrow well. A prostitute is a deep pit, and an adulteress is a narrow well. These are portals. Any type of hole or any type of anything like the pit or narrow well. These things are portals. Especially when it's identified to or connected to a woman. It's a portal. A woman is a portal. And depending on what this woman carry, is depending on what her portal will produce. Or what her portal will um portray if that makes sense because understand this understand this understand this is why a, a lot of men a lot of men have sexual relations um with women or a woman and then he finds himself in some sort of of curse or he finds that he just may be dead right he may just lose his life just by entering into that portal of that woman he loses his life physically and spiritually it is possible because when you don't know the the portal behind the woman you enter into a trap into a deep pit, you enter into a narrow well that seems as though it's there's no light. There's no light in there. And so you begin to dry up. You begin to enter into a drought. You begin to <clears throat> you begin to dry up in your finances, your career, your family, everything just dries up and it becomes dead. Until you yourself might even die. It's the same concept that I tell people when I speak about um, masturbation. When you give your seed to um, demonic entities, you willingly give your seed to demonic ent entities, marine spirits. You become dry. And that's a teaching I'll do at another time. So understand this. This is why God... This is why God ordained um, marriage. He ordained women to be um, fruitful, go forth and bear fruit. He, he, he ordains women to, 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 to carry babies. Satan hates it. He hates it because he knows the spiritual, the spiritual truth behind this. He knows the spiritual truth behind our destinies. And our destiny is helper, right? So it all marriages, women and babies, they all lead to 
fulfilling destiny is here on it. These are some of the top three things that Satan hates. He hates it. He hates it with such hatred that he seeks every which way to destroy it. <clears throat> because he knows the high chance of you entering into your destinies. One, because of a marriage. Two, because of a health meet or soul meet. And three, because babies. Yes, babies help you enter into your destiny. Without Eve, the destiny of man would have never been fulfilled. The Messiah, Jesus, came through Eve. And this is the importance of women today and every day, right? No matter what the culture or the world says, there would be no life if it was not for the mother of all living, Eve. And a lot of people blame Eve for sin, but no, Adam was right there with Eve. They both sinned at that same very moment. And as we continue to be women, continue to be women of God, continue to be that person whom God has really called us to be, we continue to be mother or mothers of all living, right? Especially in the sight of God. We are the Eve of our generation. We are the Eve of our generation because through us, the will of the Father will continue to be manifested as we bear fruit, we multiply and pray that our fruit be being good may manifest the Messiah, Jesus Christ in all its ways. I pray that my fruit may manifest Jesus Christ, the Messiah in all its ways. I pray that my seed will be, will follow the ways of Jesus, will be like Jesus. Better than I can even become, better than I can even be. In every breath, we expect that Jesus to be manifested through that baby or that child or that soul. And this is what Satan, Satan hates because he, he don't know. He simply do not know when Jesus can come back and how Jesus can come back. He simply don't know. He don't know. So at every moment, in every day, he is anxious. He's anxious because he knows how short of a time we have. So this is why he tries to prohibit um, destinies from being fulfilled because of this very truth and it all started in the garden of eden i pray that you understand this i pray that it brings some type of revelation to you concerning the true and living word of the almighty god and how satan has just um perverted satan has just perverted women women have been just so perverted because of our culture and society today not just through porn but through entertainment if we really do know who we are in the lord and what we hold we will be unstoppable unstoppable like i said not just as women because we need our men <laughs> but we are to lead our men into their destinies this is why Eve, this is why Eve met Adam in the garden to lead him into his destiny. But before they could have gone onto that path, Satan corrupted it. So, if by some means this you may relate to this, I would always encourage you to stay in the presence of the Lord. Okay, stay in the presence of the Lord, and allow Him to instruct you. Allow Him to direct you. Um, the verse I read earlier is that if we commit our ways to him, he will give us the desires of our heart. But our desires must align to his desires and his will. He won't move until we move. So I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, that your people receive uh, destiny helpers in their life. Your people receive marriages, um, babies. Uh, help meet kingdom spouses. I spoke about kingdom spouses earlier this year. I said kingdom marriages 
will be so rampant this year and it is what the Lord is also speaking about many of you are gonna find kingdom spouses you're not gonna find but they're gonna cross your paths and you're gonna know and the Lord is gonna be leading you into marriage in short that is the voice of the Lord and the unction of the Holy Spirit uh, before you make such a commitment but he desires marriage kingdom marriage for his people throughout this year so i pray that you receive if that may be your desire i pray that you receive kingdom marriages i pray that you cross path with your spouse and your spouse looks at you and he knows he knows he knows he knows in the pits of his heart that you are the one he has been looking for all his life you are his soulmate his helpmate um i pray this in the mighty name of jesus i pray that if you're seeking pregnancy the lord place favor over your life the lord be gracious to you the lord have mercy on you to give you the desires of your heart whether it be a boy or a girl i pray that he give you the desire of your heart in pregnancies and babies to help you propel and accelerate you into your destinies if you're looking for um you know if you are desiring anything other than that i pray that it aligns to the will of the almighty god for your life I pray that it aligns to his will. I pray that he's able to speak to you even in your hearts to get you to come to uh, the place of where he wants you to, to that alignment of his will for you so that he can begin to move on your behalf. And in, you know, while you're sleeping, he's working. He's working while you're sleeping. And, you know, the next morning you wake up, you realize that, Whatever you have desired for is right there in front of you. I pray that that be a blessing in your life. The Lord makes it happen for you throughout this year. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you guys need prayer, if you guys need prophetic word or insights about your life, don't, for, don't forget you can email me. Email me your name, um, where you're from, a general idea, and the areas of your life you want me to prophesy into. Um, the information is in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share, uh, follow me on my other social media platforms, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and like this video. Um, yeah, until next time, guys, it's a pleasure to be here every single time. Until next time, I pray um, the Lord privilege me to come on here and speak his word again. Okay, bye-bye.